Scientific notation is often used in science to express very large or very small numbers. It is written in this format where the number given to the left is a number between 1 and 9.9999999, as many nines as you want. It just can't be 10. So a number between 1 and 10 that is not 10. However, it can be 1. And then we express and we say times 10 to the nth power. So this is a whole number. It can be positive, it can be negative. Now if n is less than zero, so if it's a negative power, then my number that I am trying to express is less than one. If it is a great, if it is a um, power greater than zero, then my number that I am expressing is greater than one. So it's a larger number. I'm going to give you some examples. If I said that there are this many helium atoms in one liter of helium gas, let's express that in scientific notation. So I need to take this and I need to make this a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to place my decimal point right between the 2 and the 6. So I'm going to make this 2.68. Now I have to be cognizant of significant figures. And if I look at this big number, all of these zeros are trailing zeros. So they are not significant. I have three significant figures. So therefore, when I write my scientific notation, I also must have three significant figures. Now, When I figure out what my nth power is going to be, I have my decimal point right there between the 2 and the 6. I need to figure out how many decimal spots I need to go to get to where my decimal point originated, which my, dec my original decimal point is right here at the end. So I need to move to the right. How many spots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-two spots. And we can see here that this n power is greater than zero. And so my number is a large number. It is greater than 1. Now notice that this number that I want to express, the length between a carbon and oxygen atom and CO2, notice that this is a number that's smaller than 1. It's 0 0.0000000116 meters. So let's first see how many significant figures are in this number. All of these leading zeros are not significant, so just the 1 and the 116, so 3 sig figs again. So I need to make this a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to put my decimal point right here between the 1 and the 1. So I'm going to write 1.16 times 10. Now, with me putting that decimal point right there, to get back to where my decimal is, I have to move to the left. Now, because I have to move to the left means that I have a negative exponent. How many spots do I need to move left? I need to go one, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. So then we can always just double check this. If this was kind of clustered and confusing, sometimes what I like to do is I say, I write my 1.16, put my pen on my decimal point, and I move back seven spots. Negative means back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my new decimal, and I fill these in with zeros. So did I start with point zero 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 one one six? Yes, that is my original number. So 
I would like for you to pause and try to write these five numbers in their, uh, in their scientific notation. Now, let's see if yours match mine. I would look at this first one and go, okay, I only have one significant figure. And to make this a number between 1 and 10, I would just say 1 and put my new decimal point right there. Now, I need to move to the, it's a number larger than 1, it's 100,000. So I need to move to the right. I'm going to have a positive exponent. And I need to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. So 1 times 10 to the fifth. Now, letter B, we can see is a very small number, right? It's less than 1. So I'm going to still put my decimal point right here to the right of the 1, because that is a number between 1 and 10. So 1, and I need to move backwards. So here's my spot. I'm going to go back 1, ah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 8 spots. And then same logic for 1 times 10 to the 7th. 1 times 10 to the negative 12. This time I would move back. 12 spots. And this one is a big one, the mass of one helium atom. I would put my decimal point right there between the 6 and the 6, and I would have to move back 24 spots. Now here I want you to try the opposite. Here I'm giving you the scientific notation, and I want you to write them as ordinary numbers or in their long form. So take a second, pause the video, and write these out in its long forms. All right, double check your answers to see if they match mine. Now, when you were looking at your calculator, sometimes it can be confusing. If you were to be multiplying or dividing um, and your calculator gives you an answer that looks like this, 7.45e negative 17. All that that e is telling us is 7.4 5 times 10 to the negative 17. That's just their way of expressing that. Now, on the Canvas site, there is a link for a scientific calculator, and I want to show you how to put, in, put this into the scientific calculator that you can use for um, your turns or the proving grounds. I'm going to flip over there. This is what you should um, see on the Canvas site. And here's what you would do. If I wanted to express 5.36 times 10 to the fifth, don't hit the times button. That's where there's going to be a lot of mistakes that happen in calculations. You go down to the EXP and you type EXP in. And notice up here, it types it automatically puts in times 10 to the, let's say, sixth power. So there you go. That made my 5.36 times 10 to the sixth a large number. If I wanted to express this as a negative 6, I would just hit this plus or minus button at the bottom. And there we go. It just made it a very small number, less than 1. So please remember to use this x exponent, exponential button. Now, if you have another calculator that you're using um, that is, let's say it's a TI-83, it's a scientific calculator, um, or what a basic standard calculator, and if you are getting uh, incorrect answers or if you're not sure how to put it in, please, please, please take a picture of your calculator and send it to me so that I can show you how to correctly input it into your calculator. I would hate for you to get wrong answers when you think you're doing it right. So that pretty much sums up our scientific notation.